setting this up, but uh, we're so happy that you could take some time for us uh, and, and bless us uh, on this Friday afternoon. And, and if I just give you a couple quick tips, number one, if you want to just see me in bed, uh, Ben, hit speaker view in the top right-hand corner of your screen. That way it'll, it'll switch automatically between me and Ben as we talk. Uh, number two, uh, feel free to throw questions in the chat box. Me and Emily will be watching that to make sure we can uh, ask those questions of Ben for you. And number three, if you do want to ask a question, just raise a hand and Emily will let you know when she can unmute you and give you the chance to ask that question. Sound good? All right. Hey, Ben, uh, you hearing us okay? I do. Loud and clear. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for taking time to get together with us uh, th this Friday. Yeah, my pleasure. I know, I know you guys are getting the, the brunt of this thing. I, I don't know if you guys also are aware that Washington State was kind of like the epicenter, the first, first one to start getting hit hard. So I, I've been living in this world for about four weeks, and I've been predicting it for about six weeks, making changes in our businesses. So it's been a, um, an exciting time to, to figure out how leaders actually show up, Michael. We always talk about gradual and sudden. Gary's been talking about a shift for a while. I don't think any of us thought it would happen this fast, right? <laughs> with, 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 with the na worldwide pandemic. So uh, how would you describe, and, and I love the phrase you used on your, uh, on your um, uh, uh, podcast with Chad, how would you describe the environment we're in right now? <laughs> well, feel free to be honest, Ben. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you guys just had Mo on here. <laughs> and, and, and what you'll see is, is you're going to see there's a little bit of a different different delivery uh, from one of my my uh, role models in life, Mo, and me, because I don't give a shit what I say. You guys don't <laughs> pay me, and I don't care if I offend you. I'm just going to tell you exactly how I see it. And on my podcast, Michael, I said, this is freaking chaos. Like, well, but what were you thinking? I don't think freaking was the word you were originally thinking. <laughs> no, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking we're two weeks away from zombies walking up and down the street chewing on my arm. That, that is what I've been thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I picked the wrong time to get into The Walking Dead. I've been binge watching it the last two weeks and it's completely yeah. messing me up. <laughs> so you know, th this is freaking chaos. And this is the greater New York area. So you can talk however you want to talk here. I mean, it is. I mean, and, and you, you've seen the markets. You, you've been around for years. You know, so you saw, oh, wait, yeah, you, you were just only two years, I think, in the business at that time, weren't you? Just a few years? I got in the business in 2004, like halfway through it. So I had a couple years under my belt, but I wasn't a good enough agent by then to even understand right. really what was going on. But, oh, wait, hit me. You know, I own properties that I probably sh shouldn't have bought in the first place on loan programs they shouldn't have given me in the first place. And the cozy, the coffee. Business. Yeah, I grew my business faster than I should have. And I was spending... Uh, spending pendings instead of closings. Anybody on the call ever spent their pendings? <laughs> yeah, I was doing that. I was doing that. <laughs> hey, Chip, good to see you. We, we spend it before we get it sometimes, right? So, so you, you experienced 08. You saw, you know, people are comparing this to 08, 01, the dot-com crash. How would you compare it to all those other, those other times? Uh, this is unprecedented. Yeah. Like, this is going to go down in history uh, as, as one of the single most society changing events and economic impacting events uh, in, in the modern world is my guess. Everything's changed from, from today forward, everything's changed. And I've been sitting back asking myself the question if everything's gonna change and this is gonna be the ending of everything that I've become used to, what is this gonna be the beginning of for me? Mm. What is this gonna be the beginning of for my business? How am I gonna evolve and change? and I think we're all seeing it. Like our priorities are changing. Our relationships are changing. You know, I, I did a podcast this week. We haven't dropped it yet, but on forgiveness and resentment and, and reaching out to these relationships that we've just let on the side because we didn't have time to deal with it. And now we're all thinking, even if we don't like somebody, if we're mad at our sister or our brother or our family or whatever it is, we still want to know that they're healthy. So now we're swallowing some pride and sending a text or making a phone call and just saying, hey, hey how are you doing? Right. The, the, when does that podcast drop? That sounds awesome. Uh, today or Monday, something like that. Yeah. Awesome. We'll definitely look for that.
So, so you know, I'm going to come through and kind of ask you some questions from your podcast, your podcast with Chad. I'm not sure, you know, who, who uh, hopefully a lot of the folks on here listen to that. You know, you talk, uh, talk about taking action in those three areas to take action right now at home, at work, in your community. So when, when you see people taking action at home, what, what should they be doing right now? Well, I think we have the obvious things that we need to deal with. Uh, number one, we need to uh, just stay healthy. And we need to find a way to protect our family and our friends and so on. But healthy is, is, a, is a big word. Like we have to avoid this virus, but we can't go freaking crazy either. Like I'm going a little bit stir crazy right now and, and uh, we have to find a way to stay healthy and maintain our energy. We have to maintain our emotions and our, and our mindset because it can go real dark real quick. And some of you guys know what I mean. I mean, we just, we get so isolated and, and our mind starts focusing on the thoughts of failure or the, or the, the, um, the mistakes that we've made or, or whatever. It just gets consumed with this negativity. So we got to work on managing all those things. But we also got to build a bunker. Mm-hmm. If we're going to work from home, then we got to find a place and make it, make it productive. We got to get up and put our mascara on. I got super long eyelashes. So <laughs> I've, always, I've always been accused of wearing mascara. But we got to get up and we got to look like we're ready to work. Yeah, Get up, a- exercise, get dressed, take a shower, right? Just because you're working home doesn't mean you show up any differently than you were three, four weeks ago. Yeah, at least from the waist up. Yeah. Because on Zoom, <laughs> just make sure your Zoom is like from the belly button up and you're fine. Walk around in your undies. <laughs> I have seen some t-shirts like that employee of the month t-shirts that has someone with a shirt and tie and boxer shorts on so yeah i'm gonna start perfect. ordering them for my staff <laughs> that's perfect so you, you talk a little bit about so so set up that bunker so when, when you suggest people to set up the bunker i mean and and not everyone's home was designed for that what are some of the key things they should be doing to set up that bunker like things they want to surround themselves with you know uh a, a bunker should have supplies uh, your, your water, your snacks, your drinks. Like you don't want to be going to the refrigerator making bad life choices all day. You're going to end up like me, a body by Hagen dazs right? <laughs> you, you need to like get your snacks and get your water, get your computer set up, facing it away. Don't sit by your television. Like just find a corner. And I set mine up on a kitchen table. It's kind of in a corner. I'm not looking towards anywhere else in the house, right? I put my dog bed on one side. I got my computer in front of me. Got my camera there, my phone ready to go, and I sit down and do work. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. now, I'm at my office because uh, nobody else is at the office, so I can isolate in place <laughs> at my office, and I, I feel comfortable here. So I've been going into the office and hiding here by myself. I had to swing through my office end of last week, and we, we have a huge corporate building where there's normally 1,500 to 2,000 cars. I think there's three cars in the parking lot at any given time. It's, it, it's eerie. Yeah. yeah, and you see these people that are slipping out to work because they have a house full of kids and a spouse, and they're like, "I haven't spent this much time with my spouse since my freaking honeymoon. <laughs> I, I need out. I need out of this place." Yeah. Well, I, I I said to people yesterday, three things could come out of this that will help the real estate market. Either a, uh, people are sick of their houses and want to get out. Uh, B, there's going to be more kids coming about nine months from now, which will mean they need bigger houses. Or C, an increase in the divorce rate <laughs> that will also yeah. cause more home sales. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, people are sitting at home right now making babies or searching for real estate, yeah. right? And we know one of them only takes a couple of minutes. So the, the rest of the time, they're out there searching for real estate and, and, and ready for us to help them. Yeah. So, so you, you talked about making sure you're, you're taking action at work. What should smart real estate professionals be doing right now? You know, I, I think we have to take financial action. And we need to get rid of things that haven't helped us get to where we're at. And we need to get rid of unneeded expenses. I think there's a little bit too much uh, focus right now on expense reduction because people are cutting things that, that work for them. I had an agent that said, I'm going to get rid of my farm. And I said, all right, why? He's like, because somebody told me to cut all my expenses. And I said, well, how much business did you get from it last month? He's like, I got four deals. I said, well, what do you spend? He said, I spent a thousand dollars. I said, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be stupid. I'm going to cancel my CRM. Why? Because somebody told me to. Well, how many listing alerts do you have set up in there? I have a thousand. Oh, so you're going to get rid of that and go set up a thousand? No, don't be stupid. Yeah. Like we got to continue doing the things that help us be successful. And I've been telling my people, you can't expense manage yourself out of a recession. Nope, you can't. 
you have to revenue your way out of it. So what we have to do at work, we got to come in prepared with the vision. What are we going to accomplish today? What is our goal? For me, it's just like if I was a TL, I need to have a minimum of two new appointments today with somebody that wants to talk about buying or selling real estate, whether that's on a Zoom or I could safely do it face to face. And that should be your goal every single day is who, who are the two that I'm going to talk to about buying, selling, or investing in real estate. So when you get to work, we, we have two things that are going to happen. One, we're going to find the deals that are possible, Michael, the, the ones that will transact right now, if that's possible in your area. And the second thing, we're going to have the people that are going to need to transact as soon as the gates of real estate open up. Now, are you going to start working then? Or are you going to have your funnel so full that by the time you get there, you're going to put 10 listings on the market and have 10 buyers already pre-approved? Yep. And that's what we should be doing right now. If people are waiting for the gates to open to start, they're, they're going to be run over by the people that are already at the starting gates right now, you know, getting ready for the race. Yeah, this is not a snow day, no. ladies and gentlemen. And unless you married right, my dad always said it'd be way better to fall in love with a rich girl than it was a poor one. But I just never <laughs> found one, you know? That, that just, that, those, those cards weren't in the, in the deck for me, right? So I still have to show up. I got bills to pay. I got a house payment, right? Right? I have to find a way to continue operating and moving my world and my business forward. So I have to fill my funnel with, with future revenue. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and you'll find there's, there's two types of agents out there for, for the most part, the agents that are still working, still plugging away. And then there's the ones that are fearful and nervous and they're locking down and, 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 and don't want to go out there. And we've been talking a lot that, they're both okay. Nobody's wrong. We've got to accept each other for, for, for who they are. But you talked a little bit on, on your podcast about the, and I'm jumping around the questions I sent you a little bit, um, the, the loud versus the silent, because we have a big split between those two types of people. So what do you say about the difference between the people that are screaming from the, the rooftops, you know, get down versus the ones that are still, you know, taking action? You know, I, in my podcast, I talked a lot about empathy when I talked about leadership and I, and I think there, there's a word out there that stands true for, for us. And it, it's, we, we can't, we can't have judgment right now. Right. We can't judge those who are choosing one path and, or judge others that are choosing theirs. I'm trying as hard as I can to stay out of judgment and I'm making the best judgment for myself and my family and my business. But you have to understand the loud are not the majority, the loud are just the loud. And there are a lot of loud people out there that, that are making decisions and throwing rocks, right? Because they're sitting at home bored out of their mind, not doing anything. So they have nothing better to do than try to make other people's lives miserable. Right. So right. what I'm doing is I'm just trying to ignore them. And I'm coming from a place that people need me right now. And I'm going to do the best I can to show up. Unfortunately, I'm not a nurse or a doctor and, and I can't save people's lives medically but I can help people with the skill set and with the business that I own today. And I'm going to do the best that I can to deliver on that service during this time. That's awesome. And you're always someone that gives to the community. I mean, you're, you're one of KW Care's biggest donators every year. Yeah. You know, you both yourself, your offices and, and your region. So when we, and we'll jump back to community for a second, you talked about how you can give to community in red days, just around the corner. Red Day is coming up in just a few weeks. So what are some of the things when you talk about empathy and being a leader and, and giving back to your community, what, what are some of the things that you guys are seeing or maybe already doing that, that's supporting the community at large? I'll share some ideas from, from some of our sales teams and some of the people that we mentor and coach in my own companies. Uh, one is we're trying really hard to support the businesses that are trying to survive this. And we're sharing those people that, that are still open. Uh, one of our companies went out there and bought signs uh, with their with their own logo and brand, like provided by Ben Kinney, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it said, we're still open, doing, doing carry out or take out. And they delivered those signs to all the restaurants in their neighborhood. Oh, nice. So that everybody could see that that place was, was still open and still doing those things. And I thought that was a really nice touch. And all the businesses took it with open arms. I talked to another guy, he's kind of up in your area, Adam Dow. And... And he took his, his virtual tour camera. He doesn't have the expensive Matterport one that takes seven hours and costs too much. He has like one of the Rico ones that are great. They're like, they're, they're affordable. He, he took it into somebody's art gallery 
and, and made a virtual tour of the art gallery so that that gallery could still continue to show their business off to people on Facebook awesome. and to people on their website. I love that. What a first class, what a first class thing to do to show up in your community and to offer those types of services. Awesome. Yeah, and we're talking a lot about people doing, you know, food drives, you know, going around your neighborhood or to your farm, leave a bag full of canned goods out at the end of the driveway that we can pick up. You know, there's lots of kids home from school that, uh, that, that, that only get the food at school. So you know, the, the food shelters are definitely struggling right now. So that, that's always another area to help in the community at the moment. Yeah, yeah we worked on uh, baskets for some kids this morning. Um, and that's something that's really dear to my heart, Michael. You probably heard the story, but I grew up super poor. I was in a in a seven or two hundred and seventy square foot cabin with my dad that was half filled with garbage and debris, no power in an outhouse, and uh, we we relied on the food bank. And back then, the food bank would give you a bunch of things that people donated, and a lot of things that people donated didn't even have labels on them back then. So you had to freaking shake them or guess. And we were always hoping for the fruit cocktail. And if you want fruit cocktails, a Kid, open up like canned peas or canned asparagus, you were super pissed. <laughs> right? You were like, I want the little cherry things or some pears and I got some freaking peas. Right? You, you were fired up. And I, I was always fired up like that. But what people think about is they think about hunger as an issue in the holidays because that's when everybody does food drives. Yeah. That's not the time that families are hungry. Families are the most hungry in the summer because mm -hmm. most children who are in poverty situations rely on schools for breakfast and for lunch. And for many of them, that might be the only meal that they get. So I, I'm incredibly worried about, about the abuse and neglect and hunger and, and, the, and drinking and situations that are happening right now in our community. Uh, I, I know it's massive and my heart goes out to those kids. So yeah, anything we can do to provide food right now, especially for, for children is 100% is needed. Yeah, so, so that's kind of the way I'm gonna you know, steer a lot of my uh, red day <laughs> adventures is, is find a way to make sure we help some of those, th those shelters. I think um, it's, a, it's a reasonable sphere call to make too, Michael is, yeah. Hey, Hey, one of the th uh, concerns that we've identified is that there's some families out there that need food with children. And uh, we want to make sure that you know that our businesses are doing the best we can to make sure that they're supported. And we're working with our sphere and our clients. If you guys have things you'd like to donate and leave outside, we'll swing by and grab them. And if more importantly, if you know anybody that's having a hard time right now, let me know. Send me a private message. We'll keep it confidential. And let's see what we can do to come together and help some people out. Yeah. Just having that conversation is going to set you apart from everybody else. And when it comes to real estate, what I found is I'm making my own sphere calls as well, Michael is a bunch of people are looking up and saying, you know, I'm really glad you called. My, my, my spouse lost their job and, and we have too big of a house, we need to make some changes. Or my Airbnb, there, I, we lost all our, our, our renters and we're gonna need to put it up for sale. Or whatever the thing might happen. Yeah. There's a massive amount of real estate related questions happening right now because of this chaos. And we've never been needed as real estate professionals more than we are today. And we can safely answer those questions from home and help a lot of people if we're willing to reach out to them. So that's just it. You got, we've talked a lot about the caring call that they've been talking about and the shift pivot. Reaching out, how you doing? How's your family? You know, how's business? Um, we've got a captive audience. <laughs> they, they, they've got nothing else going on. They're sitting at home. They're willing to talk to you. But I, I love the script you used before regarding the, the, the food for the kids because that just gives us another touch, another opportunity to show, show what we do. So, so you, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, as we're going through this chaos, you mentioned earlier that there's been a lot of things changing. Uh, what do you see in our industry? You know, we had to adapt to Zoom listing appointments and Zoom buyer meetings pretty fast. I know you're heavily vested in technology as well. You know, what, what do you see coming out of the other side of this from a real estate perspective that excites you? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that are going to happen. One, uh, Warren Buffett said, when the tide goes out, you see who's wearing any shorts. Right. And you're going to see the businesses that didn't have a profitable model yeah. that were that were just overfunded to start with, but they don't have a great model starting to falter. I mean, you see Compass doing layoffs, you see EXP doing layoffs, you see Redfin doing layoffs, 
You see open doors shutting down all their operations across the US. You see all of these businesses that were built on a house of cards that are, that are struggling financially and they have to make big changes because the model doesn't support the, the expense. Yep. So they're gonna have to pivot to survive and some of them actually won't be able to survive. But we as individual agents, it doesn't matter what company you're at, we're very adaptable. We can move and we can survive if we choose to do so. I think uh, from a brokerage point of view, Michael, I'm wondering why I have training rooms that sit vacant 20 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week, and I pay for it the whole time. But right, I'm wondering, can I change to an experience like this? I actually like seeing Paul's face, right? And Reed's face and Stars and Debbie's and Williams and D's and Marco's and Ida's, right? I think it's a, it's a great experience and I can really get used to that. Yeah, it, it, we're actually getting more people, more people yeah. on a Zoom call than we could ever even fit in the training. I couldn't fit this many people in a training room. That's for, right. For call. So, or for me to go out, it would cost us a tremendous amount of money to rent a space to create an environment for, for this conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, we're pivoting on our teams. As you said, I own some tech companies. I rolled out a visual, uh, virtual package for all my tech customers and for my sales teams. But I did it for my sales teams first and foremost. We, we created a, a virtual open house lead generation page, a virtual uh, showing lead generation page. Mm. We created a safety page on how are we actually doing real estate safely because there's a bunch of people out there who, uh, who, who aren't assuming that we can continue operating because they're making the assumption that we aren't going to do it in a safe manner. Right. So I created a whole page. You can see it, go to my website, benkinney.com forward slash safety. And, and there's just a page in there that says, this is how I'm doing real estate safely. Awesome. Safety or safely, uh, the, the page. Safety, safety is the, the link, you got it. Awesome, awesome. No, because again, people want to know that they're going to be okay. And if you're reaching out, you're communicating, it's good to show them what you're doing. And we've gotten so many emails from any website we've ever come across letting us know what they're doing differently. Um, yeah. But we're in the people's houses every day. So you know, I talked to some uh, of my friends and partners who are in military towns and they made an interesting comment to me that I hadn't really thought about. They said, we've been selling homes virtually for a long time because these families get yeah. transferred here and they need to move into a house. And many of these families have bought two, three or four homes while never have seen them, just, just done video and photographs and then moved into the community. They've been doing what we're doing for years. We think it's strange and unknown but it's actually been happening for a long time in many markets. We're just having to become used to it. Right. Uh, you mentioned Compass before, and I've got to say this, I've been holding it in for the last week and it's driving me crazy. Compass is just coming into one of our markets here. They've recruited three agents in the last, uh, in the last week and they're writing massive checks. You know, I'm talking checks of 150, 200, 200,000 plus. And I guess uh, it, it, it bothers my mind that a company will write a $150,000 check to recruit someone while laying off 30% of their workforce. It's, right? it's, it's a, little bit of, a little bit of smoke and mirrors, Michael, because what they offer is they offer some money to contribute towards marketing, which they're the ones that you have to spend it with. Yeah. <clears throat> they offer stock options, which is based on a valuation that they'll probably never get, right? And they offer you cash, but in return, you have a split that never caps and a contract to stay for five years. Right. And if you have anybody in your brokerage who will like $100,000 cash, I'll write them a check as long as I can have a percentage of their money for the next five years. And I'm just going to do the math, right? Rheology and other companies have been doing that for years when they buy companies. They write them a check because they know that they'll get 6% royalty for the next 10 years in that agreement. And mathematically, it's a good decision. So for, for some of those companies, it's a good decision for them. For the agents, they just got to slow down and do the math. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do the math. Just work the numbers because, you know, smart business people are doing because they're getting a return back, right? So let's just sh shift back. So we talked a bit about what our industry looks like after this. You know, what do you think? You mentioned it earlier in our conversation. The way we socialize is going to change. So what do you see happening in the world? I mean, what do you see people doing coming out of this? I mean, do you see them going to restaurants quickly when this is done? Or do you see uh, a lot of different industries being changed for a while? I think the, I think people are, are habitual. They have habits. And I think that the moment this opens, the bars are going to be flooded and the restaurants are going to be flooded uh, with people. Mm. Just because we hope. we've been cooped up and we're going freaking nuts. And, and I've been spending a certain percentage of my day every day trying to understand the world. 
And I've been reading upwards of 100 articles every day for the last probably eight weeks since I started thinking about this, this chaos. And I'm not talking about sitting on Fox News or CNN or MSNBC or some, somebody that's biased. I'm, I'm reading from all sources and I'm just observing, I'm looking for data. And in China, when they opened up, uh, one of the first things that happened is the parks and the monuments and the tourist things were flooded with people. People have been cooped up for months and months. And when they opened the gates, everybody ran back there. Mm. So I think, Michael, that you're going to see the population run back into this. But what's going to be long-term affected? Commercial real estate. Mm. The businesses that, that can't recover from this. Us businesses that say, maybe we don't need this much space, right? Agents who say, you know, maybe I could work from home or maybe I could do things more virtual or maybe I don't have to pay for parking. And like, I think there's going to be bigger changes, but I think people are people and they're still going to hang out in groups and they're still going to try to hug me and shit, which I hate. <laughs> I was going to say this whole distancing, not hugging, you must be loving this. You, yeah, I, was made, this I was made for the apocalypse. You know? <laughs> I was made to be dropped off in the woods, naked and afraid. And, and ready to go. This is my life dream. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure your gun safes are fully stocked, loaded up with ammo. <laughs> uh, somebody said, hey, I see you have a lot of firearms and ammo. Do you have a lot of food? I said, no, I have a lot of firearms and ammo. <laughs> you always have the food. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, so guys, uh, if you want to ask Ben questions, start putting it into the chat box now or, or raise your hand and we'll, we'll, we'll open you up. So uh, you can ask him any questions you have. And I'm sure you, can, you open any question, right, Ben? Yeah, anything you guys want. I'm, I'm, truly, a, I'm truly an open book. So, so this is your opportunity. We've got Ben for some time. This is your opportunity to pick his brain and, and, and see what he's doing, what's working, what's not working. Um, you know, to, to feel free to start posting some of those in the chat box. Um, uh, there was another question I had for you here. Uh, how long, I mean, because you guys, you've been studying, you're watching China, you're watching other countries. Um, Washington got hit earlier than everybody else. How long do you see us in this environment, this uh, work from home, social distancing? How, do you see, how long do you see this lasting from what you've studied? My best guess is we are shelter in place until mid-May. Yeah. We have another 45 days of, of this. Now, I think we are also uh, financially, I'm planning that as well. And I made a statement in Gary Keller's mastermind group that got a little bit of traction from people. And I said, I'm projecting uh, a 25% reduction in income for March, a 50% for April, a 75% reduction in revenue for May, a 75% for June, a 50% for July, a 25% uh, for August, and then September back to normal, October's hunting season. Now, there, 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 there's some things that we have to consider. One, this could go on and this could come back in the fall. We could be right back into the situation again as we get back into flu season if we don't have a vaccine yet. And those reductions in revenue for me, I, I'm doing that from my company's point of view, but I also believe that's a choice. Usually in chaos, there's, there's winners, right? The greatest, Warren Buffett said, the greatest distributions of wealth happen in down markets, not up markets. So what we have to do is we have to look at this as an opportunity. Well, how is it really an opportunity? It's an opportunity because you have a competitive advantage over your competitors. What is that? Ken, Maria, Rudy, David, Marcus, Susan, iPhone 3. <laughs> you guys have a commitment to outwork everybody. Yep. You're willing to go in and double and triple down and saying, screw this. If it took me 50 calls last month to get an appointment, then now I'm going to make 100 or I'm going to make 150 or I'm going to make 200. I'm going to double and triple down on my work because I'm going to come out of this a winner. Right. One of my teams said, hey, should we adjust our goals? And I said, absolutely. Let's freaking adjust them up. Let's adjust them up. Yeah, because there's, there's be a lot of people, a lot of people checking out. A lot of people be checking yeah. out during this. So this is your chance to take the unfair share. Now I'm going to steal everybody's Kool Aid. <laughs> got all these agents. They aren't calling their sphere. They aren't calling cancel that expires. They aren't working their leads. They aren't doing their home valuation ads. They aren't following up with people. They're considering it a snow day. I said, let's go up and let's just show up. Yep. 
work hard, and but let's show up with compassion and empathy and let everybody in the community know that we care and we're here for them. And let's use, let's not use crappy Mike Ferry scripts or cheesy Brian Buffini stuff. Let, let's call with empathy and say, as the chaos has been created today, Anthony, any related questions for you? Has mm -hmm. anything that's happened so far, has that changed your real estate related plans for the year? What you'll find is the buyers that weren't buying are now buyers because of affordability and inventory. Mm -hmm. What you'll find is the sellers that weren't selling are now selling because now they can buy. Uh, now they have to sell or they want to pull some money out in case this happens again in the fall. Mm. There is a lot of people out there that have a new level of motivation. For the team leaders, you have to understand that every agent is now recruitable. Mm. Every business is now mergeable, right? Every employee is now hireable. There's a massive market of talent out there that currently needs a job or is in fear for their job. And you can build your sales teams and your staff and your brokerages at a level that you've never seen. Awesome. I got some questions here on, on your morning mindset or, or has your daily schedule changed? So what can you tell us about your, your, your morning mindset, how you start your day? Then what does your schedule look like today versus what it might, might look like four or five weeks ago? Yeah, I'm going to answer that in a little different way. And I'm going to share with you guys something that I do. And I don't have a morning routine. I wake up in about 13 seconds after I wake up, I'm showered, shaved, and in my car to the office. Like, this is natural right here, people. This doesn't take a lot of time <laughs> to put together. This is El Natural. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't have, you don't need time to put your face on, huh? No, no time to put the face on in the morning. I wear, a, I wear a $20 vest and a $5 T-shirt every day. Like, I'm good. <laughs> but what I do every night, Chip, is I have a I have a daily plan. And the daily plan is something I prepare at night. And I'd like to share it with you all. And it's something that I've used for a while and something that I teach my leaders. And when you stick to it, it'll change your life. Awesome. Here's what I've said to them. I said, if you start your day with a plan you created the night before, you have a hundred times more likely that you're going to have a successful and productive day. You can, you can fail at anything, but you can't fail at focusing on your plan for five or 10 minutes tonight, this night. So each night, here's what I do. Number one, I visualize what I want to accomplish tomorrow. I don't think about a task list, Michael, or a list of priorities or to do's or who I'm going to call. I ask myself the question, what would winning look like tomorrow? At the end of the day, if I came home to my dog and I said, hey, high five, give me a high five or a shake. And I said, I freaking killed it today. What would I tell him that I accomplished? What would winning look like tomorrow? And I visualize that for a second. And I think about, well, how would I feel if I did that? Right. And I think about it for a second. Number two, I see what I have on my calendar and I cancel everything that's not important. I make a commitment. I've done this for years, Michael. I cancel on average 50% of all appointments on my calendar. Really? Wow. Because most of them are people just wanting to be on my calendar. They don't really need me, right? They aren't important. They aren't moving the mission forward. Sometimes we, we wake up and we're spending all of our time working on other people's priorities and none of our time working on our own. So the first thing I do at night is I look at my calendar. I say, is everything on my calendar tomorrow important? What could I postpone? What could I reschedule? I'll often call somebody and say, would it be okay if we reschedule? I have, a, I have some major issues right now. And they're always empathetic. And I say, great, do me a favor. Call me back next week and we'll pick a great time to get together. 99% of them never call me back. Right? They didn't actually need that time. So I'm trying to create room in my world for number three. I physically on a piece of paper, Sharpie with a piece of paper, right? I make a list of my priorities. I just brained up. Here's what I want to get done tomorrow. And then I put them in order. I go through and I think about it. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? What's number five? What's number six? I, I figure out my priorities. 
I write it down because the next night I look so at it. And if I got my number three thing done or my number four thing done and not my number one or number two, I fail. Mm. I'm working on what's fun, not what's moving the world forward, right? So I, I get real clear what my priorities are. Um, all right, this is all I have to do, Robert. I'm going to send a um, – I'm going to show you – Hey, Emily, knock them off the call. For some reason, they keep unmuting, so just drop Shelly. Sorry, Ben. All right. Next one is I create a time block for all of my priorities. I make sure that I have time to work on number one. A lot of times we don't get our priorities done because we don't make time on our schedule tomorrow for it. We get to the end of the day and say, ah, oh, I didn't have time to get my tax return done. I didn't have time to, to follow up on those leads or I didn't have time for this because you didn't block it as a priority. Mm. Number five, I plan what I'm gonna do for my rituals. And I'm not talking about like uh, anything too creepy and weird. My, my rituals are every 90 minutes, I take a break. Every 90 minutes, I take 15 minutes to read something, to listen, to do push-ups, to, to have a shake, to hydrate, to do a walk, to, to pray, to journal, to listen to a podcast. I take 15 minutes every 90 minutes because that's what creates stamina. When you try to go three or four hours without a break, you actually become 50% less productive for the wow. second half. Most agents would be better off lead generating for an hour than pretending they're lead generating for three. Mm. But what I do is I create that break and I schedule it and I prepare what am I gonna eat tomorrow? What am I gonna hydrate? the exercise I'm going to do? What am I going to listen to? What am I going to read? So I take those breaks. That came from a Harvard study that, that talked about stress. People think stress is a bad thing. Stress is actually the catalyst for growth. When you think about stress on your muscles, like you're doing some curls for the girls, right? And you're out there and you're doing those things and you get these tears in your muscles. It's not the tears that hurt you. If you actually allow those tears to heal back, in your muscle fibers, they don't just heal, they grow back stronger. Interesting. So what you really need is, is stress without a break is a problem. Stress with intermittent breaks is actually the catalyst for growth. So I work in a highly stressed atmosphere where I'm working hard for short spurts and then I stop and I take a break. Mm. The last step of my daily plan is I just make a commitment, I say it out loud, tomorrow, I'm gonna stick to this plan, and I'm gonna do it tomorrow, just for one day. Just for one day. And I got that little mental trick from David Goggins. David Goggins, uh, he talked about how he had to lose 80 pounds in order to qualify to get into the Navy. And most people go up and, and they would say, I gotta lose 80 pounds. What he did is he put on his mirror, I need to lose one pound. Because if you can't lose one pound, you aren't gonna lose 80. <laughs> you just focus on that one little thing. So I'm not a disciplined person in general. I'm not like a Chris Heller kind of habit, like solid person, he, he, or Gary Keller. Like they're way more disciplined and regimented than I am. I'm a little bit more chaos. Right. But what I can commit to is I can commit to one day. If I know that tomorrow's a wacky day, I got a meeting or a training or I got something else going on or like, like Wednesday was the four year anniversary of my mom passing. Yeah, I saw that. And I knew I wasn't gonna be in my prime. I just I know, know that know. tomorrow's not gonna be my best day. That makes sense? That makes sense. It does, it does. So that is my daily plan. I do it every night for, for one minute in the morning when I wake up, I review it. What do I got to do? What's on my calendar? What are my priorities? What does a win look like? And then I get in the shower. I let my dog out. I feed the dogs. I put on my t-shirt. I jump in my car and I get out of there. And that's my daily plan. Awesome. Hey, Chris Pachaki, I think you had a question before. I saw you physically raise your hand in the window. So <laughs> what's going on, Chris? Uh, I'm you, Chris. Mute. There you go. Okay. You're good. You hear me? Yep. Chris. Okay. Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm awesome. 
Good. I met you. I at have the a back. sick sense of energy right now because for the first time in a long while, I actually feel needed. Like the businesses need me to show up right now. So I feel good. <laughs> I met you at the uh, the tent in uh, at, at your tent in Texas um, at, at family reunion, and we spoke a little bit. Um, appreciate you taking the time to help us all. Just a quick question: uh, What script are you guys using for sellers that are on the fence and not sure what to do at this time, whether or not to list their properties? <laughs> I love your backdrop, Ben. <laughs> um, uh, I'll just share one that I stole from a friend the other day because it was so good. Uh, this friend of mine, she got 10 listings in one week while in shelter in place. So I just called her and I said, what are you doing? And here's what she said. She said, I, I told the sellers that now's a really great time to sell, that we're in lockdown. We have a captive audience to market to. By the time we come out, the quarantine buyers will be chomping at the bit from seeing all the marketing that we do. And they're going to want to get into your home while other sellers are just getting prepped to get it on the market. So what we should do is just get it on now. You'll likely be under contract before the others are even on the market. And that is a real truth. Wow. Higher, high, higher inventory, right? Means, means less competition, more competition, right? is going to drive prices up. This is a unique opportunity for them to stand out. And for all the people sitting at home, making babies and searching for real estate to focus on that home. And in, by doing the virtual open houses, the virtual showings, you're creating that much more interest and, and, and might may even have a line of people waiting to get through there when they're able to do that again. There's a lot of people that have been frustrated because they got beat out because they were one of 10 offers or they had to have cash to buy it or all those other chaos is going. Mm -hmm. This is a good opportunity for those buyers out there that says, you know what, screw this. I'm going to take advantage of this situation and I'm going to write an offer sight unseen, right? And I'm going to go and see it when I have my inspection and I'm going to get this house. This is my chance. Rates are as low as they've ever been, right? This is my chance. Yeah. William O'Donnell, you've been on every one of these calls, man. I appreciate that. I saw you have your hand raised. You can unmute yourself if you want. What's your question? Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you. What's up, Ben? Will here from Long Island, New York. Quick question for you. Big guy like you making all this money. What are you doing to stay motivated to continue to wake up and continue to do the things that you're doing to make you successful? Uh, I'll tell you that uh, I'm not motivated by money. I haven't been for a long time. There's a, and I, that's kind of a cheesy thing to say because uh, one, money's important to me. Money protects my family. Money protects my retirement. Money protects my businesses. So I'm driven by it, but I'm not motivated by it. What I'm motivated by is not letting people down. And right now, I've never been needed more than I am today. I heard Gary Keller say once that leadership is going in front of your people, setting the vision, and then going behind them and starting to push. And I think that's a great definition for leadership in normal times. But what I think leadership is now, it's painting your face effing blue, <laughs> putting a sword on, grabbing a kilt, ditching your underwear, running in front of your people and saying, we freaking got this, follow me. And right now, this is a follow me opportunity where I'm stepping up in front of my people and I'm saying, we got this, we're gonna be okay, follow me. Yep. And I'm picking my phone up just like they are, I'm making calls just like they are. We're doing Zooms where they're seeing us making calls. I'm doing recruiting appointments with my TLs. I'm doing listing presentations with my agents. I'm doing buyer consults with my agents, I'm calling my sphere, I'm lead generating to builders, I'm doing whatever I can right now. I painted my face blue, I grabbed my sword, I put on my kilt, and, and I'm going to my people and saying, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Because they need me, William, I'm showing up with a massive amount of energy. Awesome. Probably more than I ever had. Because our customers need us, my friends need us, our employees need us, and our, and our sphere need us. And I, I, would, I put another little comment on there. I have successful businesses. I have a lot of them, nearly 50 companies. Every one of them is under attack today. Every one of them is challenged, is challenged or struggling in some capacity. Like this is not, uh, 
this is not something that isn't impacting me. I'm probably lost 50% of my net worth in the last 30 days yeah. in valuations of my businesses and the valuations of my stocks and the cash depletions that we're dealing with. That's a really big number and it hurts, but there's nothing I can do about it. See, losers focus on the things they can't control, the virus, the weather, the lockdown, the traffic, who's sick, who's not, who's president. Winners focus on what they can control. What can I control now? My mindset, my actions, my attitude, how I treat people, how I show up, when I get up in the morning, right? And I'm really focused on what I can control right now. And that's giving me energy and motivation. And I'm ignoring the drama and the chaos and the naysayers, right? And all that other stuff. And I'm just taking action. Awesome. And which brings us to the other question. Someone asked how big the Ben Kinney company is. You said you've got 50 companies under your umbrella. We have eight tech companies, Brivity, Active Rain, Quickly, Blue Roof, Redmond, those sort of brands. Uh, we have eight brokerages in the U.S. We own the U.K. region and a market center there. We have 31 expansion teams, mortgage title, tech training. Uh, my payroll is... Uh, is well w2 is well over a million dollars a month so this wow. is a really 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 hard time for us and we've done we've done tough decisions i asked my 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 employees to take a 10 percent pay cut during this time and it was either 10 percent or i had to lay off 20 percent of the people mm. so instead of doing that i went to everybody and said how do we keep as many jobs as possible i got rid of all my salary all my comp right and i asked my people to contribute and they all did and then we went through and we cut every unneeded expense that we could and we negotiated the rest. And then we spent every ounce of energy after that doubling down on how to grow revenue, not, not, not anything else. Good. How do we move forward? You, you do we with expenses, but then how do we grow from here? Cause like you said, you can't expense your way out of this. You got a revenue. We got to grow. Yeah. We got to recruit people. We got to hire people. We got to get buyers and sellers. I got to get mortgages coming in. I have to get software customers. Like in order for me to survive, I have to move forward and I'm just making a choice that I'm going to. Awesome. Hey, hey Lim, I, I think you're under iPhone today. Your hand was up. Lim Bonses. Well, unmute your phone. You have a question for Ben? Yes. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much. I just have a quick question. Are you single? <laughs> 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 trust, trust me, you don't, you, you don't want me in my life. It's probably the, uh, the Listen, worst life I, I love your, I love your energy. We look alike so much. I want to start following you today. But by the way, Lim is happily married to an amazing man, so she wasn't asking for herself. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lim, that might be the first time on a Zoom that somebody made me blush. <laughs> Oh, well, well, you have to get uncomfortable, right? Well, well no, now I, you've officially met Lim. I have a golden retriever who loves me very much. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I want to hear from these other Sam Ratner, what's up, buddy? Sam Ratner? I'm sure you've met Sam over the years. He's a longtime KW guy. You can unmute, Sam. There you go. I am. There we go. Uh, hey, Ben. What's going on, buddy? Hey, brother. Hey, so this is just a plug for Ben. I've been with Ben for about five plus years or so. I threw it in the chat box before. Being with Ben, Ben Systems, Ben CRM, platform, everything else, our business has grown over 200%. It's rocking, it's rolling, it's not really stopping. We're dialing for dollars every single day. We're making our care calls every single day. If you're not making your care calls, get out there, go do it. And if you need a system that's gonna make your business rock and roll, get in touch with Ben and his companies. Thanks, Sam. What I love about you is you're on all of our trainings. You're always participating. You're on our happy hours. You're there contributing. You're giving us suggestions and feedback and, and ideas. I, I really appreciate that, buddy. Who else has a question, comment? Well, actually, actually, I have a great question in the box from Jeremy Goulish. Jeremy Goulish, just so you know, Ben, he raised over $40,000 in a week to buy masks for a local hospital. Uh, it was awesome. He asked a great question. As you study the market, and understand that the biggest transfers of wealth happen in markets, where do you see the biggest opportunities coming out of this? Opportunities come in, in so many different shapes and sizes. It could be businesses that could be bought. 
brokerages that could be merged. It could be people that could be hireable, agents that could join your team. It could be new sources of leads. I think there's going to be an unlimited amount of future opportunities from this. As long as you aren't burying your hand in the sand, and as long as you can take action quickly enough to have capital available to hire or invest or buy, and if you don't have the capital today, then you need to double down on your, on your uh, revenue so that you can have that money in the next couple months or towards the fall when it does become great opportunities. I would tell you that I'm not pulling my money out of the stock market, but I'm not putting any more money in. Right. I'm, not, I'm not transacting on real estate deals right now. I'm just sitting on the sidelines. I'm solidifying my business and making sure it has security and I'm doubling down on revenue. And I'm just gonna stand on the side for a little bit until that answer becomes wholly clear. Right now, it's not clear to me. I don't know if we're going into a year or a two year or a five year recession. I don't know if we're gonna come out of this in three months and we're gonna forget about it. I don't know. I read an article yesterday that said we're in the first of nine innings. And I, and I probably believe that in some way we're in the first of nine innings. So I'm just going to sit on the sidelines, do the best I can to continue. And over the next couple innings, I'll start deciding what opportunities there are. I had three tech companies this week call me to try to sell their company to me. Wow. So I know it's affecting a lot of people. Maybe, uh, can I share something with you guys real quick? Sure. It's about those tech companies that called me. Uh, I really appreciate you all listening to my to my Win Make Give podcast. And those of you that wrote a review, that means a lot. And if you didn't like it or you're done with it, here's another great podcast. It's called Naval, N-A-V-A-L. And it's one of my favorite podcasts. They're like three to five minutes long. They're Thank awesome. You. But he talks about the four types of luck. And, and, and I think it's, it's interesting for us to think about the four types of luck right now because we're going to be looking around and there's going to be lucky people. The first type of luck is blind luck. Blind luck is somebody that walks into the restroom and they come out with a listing. You guys know those people. They don't have a database. They don't have a CRM. They've never done anything, but they do a truckload of business accidentally and they can't even explain to you how they do it. They just do it. That's blind luck. That's a squirrel finds a nut once in a while, right? Some people are like that. I happen to not be blind lucky. Number two, hard work luck. Hard work luck is when, when you stir up opportunity and because you knock so many doors, you call so many people, you do, you do so many emails or so many texts or whatever it is that you end up running across a lot of opportunities because you just outwork everybody. That luck is available for anybody. If you're willing and you choose to do the activity and people around you, they're gonna look around and say, that Michael guy, he's super lucky. That Ben guy, he's super lucky. What they don't understand is that I've cold called 250,000 people and I've door knocked 40,000 doors, <laughs> right? That's how I got lucky, right? My scripts weren't perfect. I stuttered my way through it. Literally, I've, I've had a speech impediment my whole life and dyslexic. I've had these challenges, but I just grind my way through it. Okay, the third type of luck, skill-based luck. Mm. This is the luck that all of us can take advantage of because right now we have a unique skill and because of that, we can look and find opportunities that others won't. Here's an example. I was walking my dog and I noticed some things happening to a house and there's been nothing happening to this house for freaking 10 years as I walk my dog by, I guarantee you that home is gonna sell. Mm -hmm. My experience allows me to know that that is a listing. So I call them, I write them a letter, I knock on the door, right? You see a garage sale, you're like, that's gonna sell. You go on a listing presentation, Chip, and they say, you know what? I would sell this home for 300,000 today. And you look at it and say, absolutely. Would you mind if I buy it? Because you know it's worth 400 mm -hmm. and you'll give them 300 today. That is skill-based luck because you have expertise in this industry, in the inventory, in the market, in your scripts and how you do stuff. That's awesome. But what we all want, Robbie, is, is we want to transition into the final type of luck. Alex, the final type of luck 
is when, when our brand, when our reputation, when our experience, and when our influence causes other people to bring us their luck. They, they walk across and they say, I found this amazing admin candidate. You should really hire him. And you're looking at the agent like, either one, they're giving me somebody crappy, or B, why can't they hire that person themselves, right? They, they don't have the money. They don't have the faith. They, they, they don't have the confidence, right? Whatever that might be. Or somebody brings you in. You guys have probably all had this where somebody says, hey, will you co-list this property with me? I need your help. So they bring you their opportunity. Commercial agents are famous for this, right? <laughs> Luxury agents get a lot of these because they, other agents don't have the confidence. So they bring them their luck. You know, my reputation of buying and turning around and launching tech companies means that when people need to sell or they hear about something that needs to sell, they bring that to me. So my challenge for you all is how could you use this time to build your brand, to build your reputation of caring and expertise, and to use your experience and your influence to allow other people's luck and opportunities to fill your world up bigger than you could ever imagine. Awesome. I'm going to take that as an amazing final thought. You've given us almost an hour, Ben, and I, I can't thank you enough. I'm sorry for those of you that I couldn't get through all the questions. We've been averaging 35 to 45 minutes on this call, and we took almost a full hour. Ben, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for what you're doing for your people, for your community, uh, for KW Cares, for the children. And thank you so much for, for the time you've, you've given with us. Uh, I think it was a great final thought. Is there any last words you want to send? Here's my last word, guys. Uh, Emily is going to post the link again for his, uh, his, his podcast. If you haven't jumped on his podcast yet, Win, Make, Give, please jump on that. Listen to it, rate it, and comment on it. That's the best way you can show Ben uh, our appreciation from today. Any other final thoughts you want to share, Ben, before we wrap up? You no, know, I put my cell phone number in the chat box. If you guys ever need anything personally, you guys can always text me. I'm a humble servant to any of you guys. If I can ever do anything to help you, your lives, your business, or somebody in need, just ask. I was really, really was honored by um, Allie and, and you asking me to come on here and share with your guys' region. Hopefully when the chaos clears up someday, we can all be face to face with everybody. And I, um, I, would, I would love that. So thanks for having me on here. Reach out to me on Facebook or uh, send me a text if you guys ever need something. Uh, I'm always around. Awesome, Ben. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great weekend, a great all Easter right. and Passover. God bless. God bless you. God bless. That was awesome.